All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we have to talk about that ongoing storm that is impacting especially, especially the northeastern United States at this point, but also there's a cold front extending down all the way to the Gulf states that we need to talk about that's going to be heading eastward and impacting everywhere to the east coast. Then we're going to talk about the upcoming pattern. You guys have been asking a lot about the temperature pattern, so we're going to touch on that as well. So stay tuned for all of these things. Anyways, before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think that this upcoming spring in general is going to go? I've been asking you guys a lot about March, but how about the overall spring from March to May? What are your current thoughts on how things will be? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Anyways, let's get straight into things, and first things first, as you can see, we have some activity there for the Rockies. We do have some snowfall going on, but the biggest thing going on at this point is obviously this huge, huge storm here in the eastern United States. And we have a low pressure system somewhere in here with a cold front that's extending way down, uh, and then this warm front out here. That's what we're seeing take place, so this warm air is shoving this up, that's why you're seeing the rain snow line kind of head north a little bit. Uh, and then this is all trying to come in behind it. Uh, and this is going to lead towards some thunderstorms here along this region. We've seen some lightning popping up there. And obviously a major snowstorm for these regions as well. Uh, as well as an ice storm there in between. So we're watching all of these impacts. Uh, let's just zoom into these individual regions. First things first, we do have some activity here near Salt Lake City and uh, there in also, western Colorado, uh, a little bit of snowfall, but especially here near Salt Lake City, we're watching for some heavier snowfall taking place there. I just wanted to touch on that. Obviously, nothing crazy going on, uh, but we do have some very heavy widespread snowfall going on uh, for Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio there. Uh, we have had that snowfall, especially here in uh, the lower peninsula of Michigan. We've seen major impacts from that. Uh, and then as we kind of shift our attention here eastward, we can see that north of this line in general, we've seen a lot of snowfall in here. This rain snow line is heading further and further northward, though. Uh, and we have had heavier snowfall at times, especially the closer you are here in the south. Uh, so, you know, regions mostly in this area have seen the heaviest snowfall near that mixing line. Usually the further and further north you go, the lighter the snowfall is. Um, but closer to where that mixing is occurring, we are seeing very heavy snowfall throughout portions of New York, southern New England. Uh, and likely, this heavier region will be heading in further north into New York, southern Vermont, and southern New Hampshire as well. We're also seeing that already building in here for these regions a little bit. So heavier snowfall for a lot of folks. Uh, also, a little bit further south, we do have that freezing rain that we've been talking about here taking place in this region. And we need to watch that closely because that is happening over a very long period of time, and that could lead towards some very, very uh, tricky situations, obviously, and slippery situations in general. Now, overall, let's just take a, a over look of this cold front. Uh, we can see that it isn't progressing very quickly, uh, but it is somewhere in here. We have a lot of cold air forcing behind it, obviously. That's how cold fronts work. Uh, but we have a lot of warm air on this eastern end as well. And it's just still this very, very stationary front. But along this area, we have seen a lot of lightning popping up on the radar. Uh, so you can see that taking place occasionally, especially earlier on. We were seeing some of that uh, throughout these regions there. Um, and it doesn't look like that's going to continue as it heads east of the Appalachian Mountains, although I do think it is possible, slightly possible, but it, it, it just is not progressing very quickly. Um, so we'll have to watch and see what happens with that. But this cold front isn't one that is like racing eastward, which is usually when you see the most impactful situations from them. This is one that is very slowly just hanging out in this region. Uh, that could lead towards more flooding, but as far as wind and thunderstorms, it's not going to be quite as intense. Uh, but over the long period of time that it chills out in these regions, that could lead towards some impacts just due to the pure amount of rainfall that's taking place. All right, so that's the entire United States. Obviously, a very major storm there in the eastern United States impacting many different states. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to talk about the upcoming pattern after the storm is said and done, including that temperature pattern, like I mentioned, because a lot of you have been asking about that, and I haven't really been talking about it. So we're going to talk about that today. Now here we are taking a look at that European model, and this is right 
there's right about where we're at. We can see the storm obviously taking place in here. Now, over time, what's going to basically take place is a lot of these storms east of the Appalachians are just going to dissipate. And we can see that the snowfall lingers here in the northeastern United States. Uh, but we get into quieter pattern, really. I mean, we have this little nor'easter southern slider thing that wants to get started, but it's very minor. And it just moves out without ever really bringing any snowfall. And we get a lot of minor clipper systems over the next 10 days with some major storms trying to develop at the very, very tail end of that time period. Maybe days 8 through 10, we start to get some activity. So at least a week in a quieter pattern here. So let's just move on to the temperature anomalies because I want to show you guys exactly what's going on. Obviously, with the low here and the cold front here, uh, and then the warm front here, what we deal with is near normal or above normal temperatures there e south of that warm front uh, and to the east of that cold front. Now, to the west of that cold front, we obviously have frigid air behind that. And we're going to watch this all progress kind of eastward over time um, as that cold front eventually breaks through. Uh, although we don't really completely break away the southeastern ridge, and this cold air does weaken by the time it heads eastward. But that is exactly what happens. Uh, and then for a time period, we have the warmest air up here in the northwestern United States, as you can see, with the coldest air here centered over the east. Although it's not a pure uh, trough in the east, it is colder in the east, I would say. And the European model wants to kind of get us in a pattern that looks a little bit like this. It's not a major trough in the east, but it is mostly centered over the east. And definitely the ridge is centered there over the west, as you can tell. And this is by the time we're reaching about March 3rd. That'll be Thursday. So we did expect a pattern like this to take place after the beginning of March, which I've talked about this for a few months, but for some reason lately, the first of every month seems to be a catalyst for a major change in the weather pattern, which obviously we know that the weather doesn't pay attention to dates. So that obviously has to be, you know, just a coincidence, but it is interesting how that's been happening. Uh, now we do eventually see a big change here. This is by the time we're reaching Saturday, March 5th. And we see the cold becomes centered over the west and a lot of warmth becomes centered over the east. And this is actually the warmest pattern uh, of the season so far if this does take place this way. Um, now this would give way for another low pressure system to follow the jet stream uh, and come in like this. And again, have a cold front underneath it and bring the cold air to the east. So that is something that we do see take place when we see patterns like this oftentimes. But we only get to the 7th here or the 6th, 7th time frame, so Sunday, Monday, March 6th, and 7th time frame, and we still have warm air here over the east and cold air centered here over the west. So this is very interesting. We get multiple flips. We go from this, uh, so cold in the west, significantly cold in the west with some warmth left over the east, to cold in the east, warm in the west. Where is it? Somewhere in here. Yeah, cold in the east, warm in the west, and then back to warm in the east, cold in the west. So it's, it's just back and forth, guys, here. Now we're going to switch to our GFS model here because we get a lot of a longer picture here. So again, quiet over the next multiple days until about days 8 or 9. We do get multiple clipper systems. So if you draw your attention to this region, well, it's going to be a little bit bigger than that. Something like this. If you pay attention to this region over the next 10 days, you will see that there is some activity in there going on. That is multiple very minor clipper systems. And that one's a lot more major right there. That happens around the fifth, sixth time frame on this model. But then, finally, once we're at about these 10, maybe 11 here, Monday, uh, March 7th here, we finally get a bigger storm to take place that's not just a clipper system. So this one kind of heads in like this uh, and just does something along those lines if we watch closely. So it goes in like that. But I will say, so even though it takes this track... We get impacts lingering because we have these cold, this cold front underneath that develops low pressure systems about here and a big old warm front right there. So this is right around that time frame where the European model also had the warm air just shoving its way into the eastern United States. And I'm sure the GFS looks the same here. We will take a look at that temperature pattern in a minute. Uh, but we can see this cold front definitely reaches the east coast here. Um, definitely there. Well, it might actually be lingering a little bit more over the Gulf state. So it might be something like this, obviously, where we see that precipitation along that frontal boundary because we know there's instability along cold fronts you learned this in school um we we know that the instability and and the lift takes place near frontal boundaries so that is what's taking place here uh, and then we get in a bit of a, a weird pattern uh where we see something like this taking place and then we see a southern jet meeting up with it as well 
Um, so there is a bit of a trough here, and there is a tiny bit of a ridge there, perhaps. Uh, and then we see a lot of storminess taking place over the eastern United States as these two uh, jets kind of meet in that region. So we see multiple storms try to take place in there for a little while after that cold front passes. And then it looks like we build back into a pattern like this. So we kind of start going back and forth with the warm air heading into the southeast and the cold air heading into uh, the west. Uh, and then this is the end of the model run, but it looks like some storminess is trying to build in in the west. So we can kind of predict at this point that if this pattern did take place, we'd see a storm come in like this again, cold front uh, come underneath, and then it all heads east. And then we see the whole pattern start over again. So it is interesting how we're in this progressive pattern where we see a big warm up and then followed by a low pressure system up to the north with a cold front coming through, crushing it. And then, you know, about a week later, we see the same thing take place. It's never just going to be this consistent warmth with no cold fronts coming through this time of year because uh, it's just so uh, volatile with everything going on. Now, let's take a look at that temperature anomalies. I'm starting back from the beginning real quickly because I know I haven't talked about this in a while and it's my fault uh, and you guys have left me comments now uh, pretty frequently about this, so I felt the need to go ahead and do that. Now, we have warmth in the west here by this point, cold in the east. This is after a cold front comes through. It's about Monday. February 28th, so the very, very end of February. Uh, and as we head towards March 3rd, uh, we see a bit of a southeast ridge taking over where the warmth is mostly in the south here. We do see some cold here along the north central and northeastern United States. That does begin to creep down. Okay, so this starts to really impact the east more and more. Um, and then we see just like the European model later on, this is a little bit later than the European model, but by Monday, uh, March 7th here, we see a big old trough out west and a huge ridge in the east here. This would lead towards some of the warmest air of the season, or actually the warmest air of the season uh, for the east, and then some of the coldest air of the spring. So the coldest air we've had in a couple months here in the west, potentially, uh, with, a, with the pattern that extreme. And probably a low-pressure system will develop here and have a cold front underneath. I think that's why there's such a sharp cutoff. We will know if that line starts to move further eastward there. Yeah, so definitely a cold front taking place, definitely a low uh, and a cold front happening around this frame with the warm front there. So this is by March 8th. And then we see that the cold wants to head further east after that cold front. So the, the cold front lets the, lets the cold air in, uh, and that's what we see happen. And then, as you can see, towards the end of the model run, around the middle of March, March 13th here, this is extremely long range, take it with a grain of salt, but we see this warmth building back in for the east and the cold building back in for the west starting the cycle over again, and we would be watching for a storm to again take that track, bring the cold front underneath, and bring the cold back to the east, and then maybe a week after that we start over again. That's my point. It's, it's a pattern that revolves in a circle and keeps happening over and over and over again. We saw this in February, and we could see this in March again as well if these models are correct. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, I'm at a 4 out of 6. I talked about very long-range things today. We got to hours... Uh, However long the GFS model goes out, that's how far we got. So we're at a 4 out of 6 uh, for that reason. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you think March is going to go as far as storminess uh, and temperature patterns? Well, actually, I think I asked you guys about temperature patterns the other day. I mostly asked about the pattern and the storminess and TY interpret, interpreting weather. That's it. I expect that March will produce multiple snowstorms. However, most of them will be very minor, as most of them will be clipper systems, and that does appear to be likely, at least in the first week of March, for the northeast and the north central, as we mentioned, but more major storms could be on the way as we reach further into March. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lerner the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Connell, Lessa Capite, Charles Dennett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Calisi also. I would also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.